Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this next lecture on the NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. Uh, so far we have spent several classes discussing uh, utility functions and uh, in the context of portfolio theory we looked at how we are looking at the maximization of the expected utility and then we talked about uh, the non-mean variance analysis and we have looked at some uh, cases or approaches for non-mean variance analysis and in the last couple of classes we are focused on talking about the safety first criteria and we have identified and discussed three different safety first criteria. So, in this class we will now move on uh, to an important step of transiting from the mean variance framework to a non-mean variance framework and uh, we will talk about a new risk measure that is what is known as the semi variance. So, accordingly we start this lecture. with a semi variance analysis. All right, so we start off with a, a, a prelude to it by observing that Markowitz uh, who actually uh, proposed the uh, mean variance analysis uh, decided to reformulate the portfolio theory. by uh, so the mean variance portfolio theory by taking into account only those returns which were very low. And accordingly, uh, he defined a risk measure that he called the semi variance. So, we start off with uh, the definition of semi variance. So, the semi variance is uh, designed to capture the dispersion for all those observations that fall below a certain level or threshold. Uh, so, semi variance uh, by this statement we have said that uh, it tries to capture the dispersion. So, it is designed to capture those dispersion for uh, observations which follow fall below a certain level. So, uh, earlier when we were talking about the mean variance framework, what we looked at is that we looked at the dispersion about the uh, mean on either side. So, that means those dispersion which are a higher valued than the mean and those which are uh, below the mean or the expected return and accordingly we had defined the risk measure to be uh, the variance or uh, which was an indicator of dispersion of all the values. But in case of semi variance we take a more selective approach and we do not take those returns which are above this predefined threshold, but rather which are below a certain threshold. So, this is sort of uh, the motivated by the fact that you are more interested in penalizing uh, those return instances which follow below a certain minimum level 
and not penalize uh, those which are actually higher than uh, that certain level as uh, was the case in case of the uh, risk measure being the variance. So, accordingly, so this threshold, we, now that you have talked about this threshold, so let this threshold be denoted by letter H. which is applicable to a range or collection or random variables of likely one period rate of return. So, accordingly the semi variance for an asset is defined as follows. So, what you do is that in the semi variance what you will do is that we will take R i minus H that is the return on the asset i and we take the minimum of uh, R i minus H comma 0 and then we take the square of this and we calculate its expectation and we define this as the semi variance we denote this by. So, the variance is sigma i square. So, semi variance will be sigma i square with two bars at the top. So, uh, if you observe carefully what we have here is that you see uh, here the motivation is if your r i is less than h that means it falls below a threshold. So, we take that uh, dispersion r i minus h and if your r i greater than h you know the, then we do not take the dispersion. So, as accordingly uh, we only take into account when it follows the dispersion only if it follow, falls below h and ignore uh, the scenarios when the return is above h and then we take the. So, this is uh, written as the minimum of this square. So, we take the square of the dispersion of this and then uh, we take the minimum of r i minus h comma 0. So, th that means that if r i is less than h you capture the dispersion r i minus h, but when uh, r i greater than h the dispersion is taken to be 0 and you take the square of this just that uh, just as you had done in case of the variance and uh, you calculate the expectation of this because it involves a random variable r i and I define this expectation to be equal to the semi variance sigma i square. All right. Uh, so, how do we estimate it? So, using historical data as we had done in case of mean variance and covariance earlier. So, we will give the estimate using the historical data as follows and this is sigma. So, sigma by uh, square that is the semi variance this based on historical data will be given by the expectation. So, it is going to be uh, the average assuming that all these events are equally likely with probability 1 by t and summation of minimum of r i t minus h comma 0 square and this can be written in the form of 1 by t summation small t equal to 1 to capital T of r i t double bar minus h square. And here I have suddenly introduced a notation r i double t bar as r i t double bar and I have to define this. So, this is defined as r i t if r i t is less than h. So, that means that if your r i t is less than h then this term will become uh, then r i bar t uh, so, r i t is r i bar t double bar is r i t if r i t less than h. So, accordingly this the term that will be minimum is going to be uh, r i t minus h and so accordingly this becomes r i t double bar h square and this is going to be simply h if r i t greater than h. So, then this means that r i t double bar minus h will become 0 which corresponds to this value. 
so this means that uh, if you look at the historical returns RIT for all time periods, in case your RIT falls below the threshold, you keep them separate and you see that how much is it different from H and you look at the difference RIT minus H and in case if it is greater than H, so obviously RIT minus H is going to be equal to 0. So, for each time step you are looking at the minimum of these two and then you square them. So, this is going to give you the minimum of R i minus h comma 0 square for each of those past events for t equal to 1 to capital T and then you calculate its expectation by taking the average of uh, dividing this by capital T assuming that each of those returns R i t t equal to 1 to capital T from the past is going to be equally likely. All right. Uh, so, now in the continuous case, uh, the analogous definition for the semi variance of asset i is given by so sigma i double bar square, this is going to be integral from minus infinity to infinity minimum of r i minus h comma 0 uh, with respect to f of r i d r i which is the probability density function and this can be written as minus infinity to h that means all those r i's which are less than h and then the minimum will become simply r i minus h square f of r i into d of r i. All right, so now I make a few observations. Uh, the first observation that I want to make is that the semi variance is called the lower partial moment secondly uh, the semi variance leads us to the definition of semi deviation and this is defined as sigma i double bar so which obviously is square root of sigma i double bar square and thirdly uh, some obvious choices of the threshold h are uh, the expected return so that is one obvious choice uh, in case uh, the, you are just worried about no loss then this could be 0 or it could simply be the risk free rate. So, the, these are just some uh, common choices but not necessarily the complete exhaustive list. So, there could be other ways of choosing your age. Uh, so, accordingly based on these three choices r double bar t is equal to r t less than r f. So, this is going to be a minimum acceptable uh, rates of returns. Then R t uh, double bar is R t is less than E R f or E R uh, that is worse than expected return. And R t double bar is uh, R t less than 0. So, this is negative return. Uh, so, this corresponds to falling below risk free rate, falling below the expected return and the uh, falling below 0 or uh, earning negative return respectively for the 3 cases. So, once we have uh, defined what is uh, a semi variance and uh, equivalently what is a semi deviation, we now need to uh, start looking at the concepts from the Markowitz mean variance framework in the context of the semi variance or equivalent to the semi deviation. And so, accordingly, what we start is that we start looking at the most important concept that came from the Markowitz uh, framework, namely the efficient frontier and what are going to be dominant portfolios. So, accordingly, I can make the observation that uh, in the semi variance framework, the concept of dominant assets on 
the Markowitz efficient frontier is defined as the following. So, the so here, uh, so the efficient frontier, uh, you would recall that in case of the Markowitz mean variance setup, what is the efficient frontier? The efficient frontier was given by uh, that uh, by, by those portfolios such that for a given level of risk, it is the portfolio that has the highest return or for a given level of return is the portfolio that has the minimum risk or simply the portfolio that has the minimum risk. So, now when you are trying to define this in the context of the uh, semi variance or semi, uh, semi deviation, then we can analogously extend this concept uh, drawn from this definition of efficient frontier or equivalently from dominant portfolios. So, accordingly the efficient frontier in this context, I will make the following observation that it is defined as those assets with minimum risk given by a semi variance or a semi deviation for a given level of expected return or the assets with maximum expected return for a given level of risk given by. So, the given level of risk will be given by uh, again the semi variance or semi deviation. So, it is the same uh, definition uh, in the mean as was in the mean variance framework uh, except that instead of variance uh, and standard deviation, we respectively just change it to uh, semi variance or uh, semi deviation. Okay, uh, so, graphically uh, the efficient frontier uh, is now going to be something which is on not on the uh, sigma E r plane anymore, but is going to be sigma double bar uh, E r plane and then the efficient frontier is going to look something like this. Uh, so, E f. So, E f is for efficient frontier. All right. Uh, so, now uh, what we do is uh, we now examine. So, now uh, in the non mean variance uh, framework, uh, of course, you have to bring utility function to the picture. So, we now examine this concept in the paradigm of uh, the utility theory okay so in order to do this uh, let us just uh, look at uh, you know we'll see this in the form of the quadratic utility and do a comparison of what happens in the uh, sigma er plane and sigma double bar er plane so, we start off with first the sigma E r space or the sigma E r plane. Uh, so, we consider the following example. So, this is just uh, for illustrative purposes the quadratic utility. So, here we, we take the quadratic utility U r to be B of r minus C r square and I will say that r is less than uh, B over C and we will see why this condition is necessary. So, accordingly what is going to be the expected utility? The expected utility is simply going to be B of E r minus C of E r square. Now, uh, B, uh, B of E r remains same in the next line, but uh, what we do is that we use the definition of sigma square to write E of r square. So, remember sigma square in this case is going to be E of r square minus E of R uh, whole square. All right. So, accordingly I will write this as sigma square plus E of R whole square. 
So, this can be rearranged at b of e r minus c sigma square minus c of e r whole square. And you see this is something that depends on uh, e r and uh, sigma square because b and c are constant. So, this can be written as some, so this is I can call this some function f of sigma and e r. So, here del f, so the expected utility uh, is sensitivity towards the expected return is going to be b minus twice c e of r. And this is going to be 0, why is this going to be 0, uh, greater than 0 because I have chosen your r to be less than b over 2 c. So, this will mean that b minus uh, uh, twice c into expected value of r is greater than 0 and uh, the sensitivity of f, remember f is a function of sigma and e r. So, the sensitivity of f with respect to sigma from this term it will turn out to be equal to minus twice c sigma less than 0. So, you see that uh, in this case f is the expected utility and the expected utility is an increasing function of the expected return. So, this means that as the expected return increases the, the expected utility is going to increase and in the second case you observe that as your sigma increases does uh, your uh, del f del sigma this is less than 0. So, that means as your sigma increases then your uh, your expected utility diminishes that means with an increase in the volatility your expected utility is uh, diminished. So, this is what you see that uh, is a characteristic of this particular example of a quadratic utility uh, when you are using the mean variance framework. Now, let us see how we are going to extend this in case of uh, a quadratic utility for the non mean variance framework. So, for that purpose the same utility function is not going to work, but we are going to have to modify this utility function in a slightly different way, but uh, it should be such that it is actually uh, it qualifies as a utility function and, uh, and subsequently we then look at what is going to be the sensitivity of f with respect to e r and sensitivity of f with respect to uh, your uh, semi deviation that is sigma double bar. So, for this purpose uh, what we have to do is now uh, we move on to the sigma double bar e r space. We have to define a new utility function e of r and this I will define as b r minus c into minimum of r t minus h comma 0 square for c greater than 0. Therefore, what is going to be the expected utility of this? This again is going to be b of e r minus c of expectation of minimum of r t minus h comma 0 square. And remember this by definition is the semi deviation. So, this is going to be b of e r minus c uh, this is going to be. So, there is a square at the top. So, this is actually uh, semi variance uh, uh, sigma double bar square and I will call this. So, you see that this is a function of e r and sigma double bar. So, I will call this a function g of sigma double bar and e r. So, uh, here uh, what we will have is. So, here we will have that the sensitivity of this expected return g that with respect to e of r is going to be b which is greater than 0 just as it was the case with the function f and del g del sigma double bar that is sensitivity with respect to sigma double bar is minus twice sigma double bar and since c is greater than 0. So, obviously, this is going to be less than 0. So, remember that this is something that we have already also observed in case of uh, sensitivity of f with respect to the semi deviation. Okay, so, so, graphically uh, this is going to look something like this. So, here so, this is the first case and you look at u of r. What is u of r? u of r is b r minus c r square and this is my threshold h and this is going to be my b over twice c. 
and the graph for the newly defined so this is more important for this newly defined quadratic utility uh, this is going to look something like this and then it is going to be a straight line so here uh, this u of r is simply going to be b of r minus c minimum of rt minus h comma 0 square and uh, your h will be here and this part this is going to be the quadratic segment of the definition and this uh, is going to be the linear segment. All right. Uh, so, now that we have talked about what is uh, the definition of a semi variance and semi deviation and looked at it in the paradigm of a quadratic utility function. Now, let us come to the main context of this course that is portfolio theory and let us see how we can actually do a portfolio analysis in this uh, framework of uh, semi deviation or equivalently semi variance. So, uh, we start off with this topic now of uh, portfolio analysis using the semi variance. So, uh, the aim is to determine the set of portfolios that would have minimum semi variance. So, this is basically determining the efficient frontier in the semi variance framework. So, it is the minimum semi variance for a given level of the portfolios expected return. So, for this purpose we again go back to the drawing board and we recall that the expected return on the portfolio P is given by and I consider uh, capital N number of assets. So, it is going to be summation i equal to 1 to capital N w i e of r i uh, with of course, the customary or the statutory constraint that i is equal to 1 to N of w i is equal to 1. So, now uh, first I need to, so I have said that what I want to do is I want to minimize the semi variance for the portfolio for a given level of the portfolio's expected return. So, accordingly uh, the portfolio semi variance, so, so far I have defined the semi variance of an asset. So, now the portfolio's semi variance is defined as sigma p double bar square and this obviously is going to be the expected value of minimum of r p minus h comma 0 square and this is going to be the expected value of minimum. Now, I can replace my r p with this expression. So, this is going to be summation i is equal to 1 to n w i r i minus h comma 0 and the square of the whole thing. All right. So, now this problem is uh, not exactly trivial or straightforward as it was the case in the mean variance framework and will require numerical computation to ascertain what is going to be the portfolio that will lie on the efficient frontier. So, I will just give a sketch of how uh, you know the, the motivation behind this and how it can be accomplished. Uh, so, accordingly uh, we observe that uh, several authors have uh, showed that quadratic program Uh, quadratic programming can be used to delineate a convex set of sigma double bar E r efficient portfolios under the following given conditions. So, under certain conditions you can actually get this set efficient portfolios in the sigma double bar E r plane. 
So, I will enumerate these conditions uh, one by one. So, the first condition is that the variance of returns is finite. The second condition is that the portfolios semi variance is continuously differentiable in the weight uh, decision variable uh, that is w i for all i. And the third condition is that the following, so I will list a first order condition. So, the following first order condition is continuous in the weight decision variables that is w i for all i. And what is this condition? This is going to be uh, del of sigma double bar square with respect to w i. This is twice e into minimum of r p minus h comma 0. So, on. so, what we need is that we need that uh, the semi variance should be continuously differentiable with respect to i and the following first order condition is continuous. So, that means this is continuous. So, uh, typically these three uh, conditions are met or achieved for several uh, well established probability distributions. All right, so just to make a note uh, that uh, the semi variance, so semi variance efficient frontier as we have uh, enumerated now. So, the semi variance uh, efficient frontier. is not driven by the symmetric variance covariance matrix since and the reason for this is that this semi variance defined by Markowitz uh, results in what is known as the co semi variance is not symmetric. Uh, that is sigma i j double bar and sigma j i double bar, these are not equal for most part. Uh, so, now I have abruptly uh, brought about this sigma i j double bar and sigma j i double bar. So, what we have done is so far we have uh, uh, extended the definition of variance and standard deviation to a semi variance and a semi deviation. Now, uh, in the original Markowitz framework we had this covariance uh, matrix. Uh, which was symmetric, but uh, the analogous uh, matrix or analogous uh, entities that were part of this matrix, they are not symmetric to each other uh, as per the definition that we are about to present. So, accordingly uh, the Markowitz, so I just want to be more specific about this uh, co semi variance. So, the Markowitz co semi variance. for a finite joint probability distribution. So, there are two variables involved. So, we have to have a finite joint uh, probability distribution is given by the following and this is uh, sigma i j double bar 
this is going to be equal to uh, the expected value of R i minus h into minimum of R i minus h comma 0. And uh, from the empirical point of view, this is estimated as 1 over t summation t is equal to 1 to capital T of R i t minus h into minimum of R j t minus h. So, this is R j, R j t minus h comma 0. And this can be further simplified to 1 by t summation t equal to 1 to capital T R i t minus h into R j t double bar minus h. So, for that you recall the definition of R j t double bar. So, uh, in, in summary we can say that uh, thus the Markowitz co semi variance is the weighted average over all t pairs of R i t and R j t that makes use of only the paired values for which R j t is less than h. Okay, uh, so, uh, just an uh, observation that uh, the Markowitz uh, co semi variance as we have defined just now may be 0 if uh, the returns of asset i and j are independent of each other. So, this anyway is sort of obvious from uh, the fact uh, that the covariance of two independent random variables uh, is equal to 0 and uh, so uh, this can in turn uh, be visualized or intuitively seen in case of the uh, uh, co semi variance. Uh, the other way that the co semi variance can actually be 0 is uh, that if all the returns of asset j uh, exceed the value of h. So, what this is going to do is then in that case it is going to render this term to be equal to 0 if it is exceeded in all cases. Uh, so, also uh, the other observation is that when i equal to j, uh, so I'll let me enumerate this as two separate observations. So, when i equal to j, the co semi variance Uh, will be equal to the semi variance uh, that is sigma i j double bar is going to be equal to sigma i square double bar. All right. Uh, so, now what I want to look at is that uh, since we are drawing analogies with whatever we have done in case of the Markowitz framework. Uh, that is the semi uh, the mean variance framework and we started off by talking about the utility functions and then we talked about uh, the efficient frontier and also made certain observations about uh, the analogous version of the covariances namely in this case it is called the co semi variance. So, one key topic from the mean variance framework that needs to be now uh, examined in the context of uh, semi variance is uh, what is the capital market line or the capital asset market uh, capital asset pricing model. So, that means you have to start looking at the two aspects that we did when you were talking about the CAPM framework namely the CML and SML uh, when the risk measure is no longer the variance or standard deviation, but is instead replaced by the semi variance or the uh, semi deviation. Uh, so, accordingly we start off with the concept of the capital market theory with the semi variance. Uh, 
so, this goes back uh, to a paper by uh, Ho Hogan and Warren uh, which came in 1974 and what they did was that they obtained a capital market line in the sigma double bar ER plane uh, instead of the sigma ER uh, plane uh, that is there in case of the mean variance framework. Now, uh, le we let uh, this CML be uh, denoted or named as CML of uh, SV just for uh, semi variance. All right, and this CML the formula is given by by the following. So, here uh, we will have as before we will have E of RP is equal to RF plus E R M minus R F over sigma M into sigma P which was the original CML and in this case the only change that will happen is sigma M will be replaced by sigma M double bar and sigma P will be replaced by uh, sigma P double bar. Uh, so, uh, the interpretation is that that this is an equilibrium portfolio. Uh, pricing model where the expected return from an of efficient portfolio P that means E of R P this is equal to the risk free rate Uh, plus the risk premium which is given by this term. Uh, so, uh, graphically let us have a look at how this is going to look like. Uh, so, here uh, we are in the sigma double bar ER plane and uh, And so, so if so, I start off with RF, and this point of tangency as before is the market portfolio. So this will give me the corresponding E of RM and uh, sigma M double bar, and this curve here is EF for efficient frontier, and this line, which is what is known as the the CML in the semi-variance framework. Uh, so, this is nothing but the CML uh, in the semi variance framework in the sigma double bar ER space. So, now we, now we come to the last topic that is the uh, SML in the semi variance framework. So, the SML for an asset I in the paradigm of the semi variance analysis uh, which is denoted by CML SV is given by E of RI is equal to RF plus E of RM minus RF into beta i. So, remember that uh, this was the original SML. So, again uh, we the only thing that changes uh, in the context of semi variance is that the beta i is replaced by beta i double bar. Uh, now, I have introduced what is beta i double bar. So, I have to define that uh, beta i double bar uh, this is going to be sigma i m double bar over sigma m square double bar and uh, the numerator according to the definition is going to be the expected value of r i minus h into minimum of R m minus h comma 0 and the denominator is simply going to be the definition of semi variance 
uh, for the market portfolio which is expected value of minimum of Rm minus H comma 0 a uh, whole square. And this can be re reduced to E of Ri minus H into Rm double bar minus H over E of Rm double bar minus H square. And uh, this beta uh, which has been newly introduced that is beta i double bar this is called the downside beta. Uh, the reason why we use the term downside beta here is that because it captures our, the sensitivity of the asset uh, with respect to the market portfolio in the context of uh, the downside risk that means the risks uh, associated from the losses driven by the returns falling below a certain threshold level. Uh, so, further uh, what you can write is that uh, this relation that we had E of R i is equal to R f this S m l this R f plus E R m minus R f into beta i double prime this relation that we have derived here this is referred to as the downside SML or as the downside cap m. Remember cap m uh, is synonymous with SML. Uh, so, graphically uh, this is what it is going to look like. So, I will have to consider this in the beta double prime uh, double bar plate uh, against E of R and this SML which I will denote it as SML. So, here please make a correction this should be SML SV. So, here this SML SV this is the line which emanates from RF uh, and this passes through M. Uh, so, I get the corresponding E of RM and here I get beta M uh, double prime. Uh, so, this graph is nothing but this SML SV or the SML for the semi variance framework in the beta double bar ER space. All right. Uh, so, this brings us uh, to the end of this lecture. Uh, just to do a recap, we have mainly focused on this lecture uh, in dealing with uh, various aspects of semi variance or equivalently semi deviation. Uh, semi variance is designed to capture all only those returns that follow below a certain threshold and the standard deviation of that or, or the square root of that is what is the standard deviation equivalent uh, namely it is called the uh, semi deviation. And then we looked at uh, this from uh, uh, three perspective this entire discussion and uh, what we had looked at here is we first looked at uh, uh, from the point of view of the utility and the expected utility. Then we also talked about the efficient frontier and finally, we also included and uh, uh, discussed the extension of uh, the capital market line and the security market line uh, in the context of uh, making the transformation from the mean variance framework and getting the equivalent CML and SML in case of the semi variance or semi deviation framework. Uh, in the next class, we will continue our discussion on this non mean variance theory and we will introduce a new topic which is called the stochastic dominance. Thank you for watching.